Hi guys and welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble and uh, on this weekend I'm actually working on a little bit of an art project. So I thought I'd share one of the things I came across, uh, something I ran into was a problematic uh, given that this I've learned something completely new and it was based on, uh, well the whole inspiration for the, the, the art project was talking to my friend Andrew Soa over my podcast called The Amp Hour. I do this with Dave Jones from the EEV blog uh, and we regularly interview people. Andrew is actually a local guy here in Chicago where I live and he's he, he lists himself as a KiCad artist which really tickles me uh, as an idea, right? Uh, but he's done some really neat art. And so he has actually written about some stuff and uh, we talk about it on that show. So I thought I'd go and give it a shot, right? And so what I did is I started making this thing here. And you see I've imported a copper layer and then the pink one is actually a uh, solder match layer. So there's gonna be some exposed areas as well. Um, and so basically uh, I was running through this and I started thinking like, oh, I wanted to put some LEDs down here and I wanted to have, uh, you know, basically connect them all together. The thing I ran into is that uh, well, the, the, I went to go export it and there was no cutouts around the LEDs. And I started thinking about, well, why, why is that happening? Why, why aren't you, what you should be seeing is, you know, a zone cutout around the LED because they're not the same net. And I started playing around the nets and all this other stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. What I came across is that basically I'm treating this big red copper zone as a huge footprint, right? And that makes sense. I imported a bitmap as a footprint. But what I really want to do is I want to treat it as a zone. And so what I'm going to show you today is actually how to turn a footprint into a zone because what we really want to do is we want to have kind of a bounded zone area that then can though then go and cut out uh, you know around an LED or a trace or whatever I have in there. So let's take a look at this. And this actually, again, this is uh, inspired by Andrew because uh, when I went to go search on Google, as one does uh, for KiCad, uh, an answer came up on the KiCad forum. You know, this is a, a forum that we help sponsor with the uh, Contextual Electronics sponsors. Um, Andrew popped right up here. So I'm going to follow through some of the stuff he talks about there. And this is going to involve going into the code of, uh, not the code, but the the files uh, are human readable, right? So all the KiCad files are ASCII based, they're human readable, and they are modifiable. Now this is kind of an advanced topic. You probably don't want to be doing this if you're starting out right away, but you'll see it's not the, the worst thing in the world. So let's let's take a look here. So uh, first things first, uh, I had created this, this, large, um, this large red area is what we're going to be concerned with here. And what I really want to do is I want to go and create a zone. If you don't know, a zone is, is a filled area, right? It's a, it's a non-copper zone. Uh, what is going on here? Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. Um, okay, so I'm going to fill a copper zone. I'm going to give it a, a, a net name, right? RX0, I'm going to give it as a net name. And I'm just going to draw a dummy shape here, right? And what you see is when I double click, now I have a filled zone. You probably can't see it. Um, maybe I should do it out here. <laughs> uh, let's, let's see if we can move this thing over. So we can move this over here. There we go. Cool. So now it's a it's a dummy filled zone, right? And there won't be anything in here because there's no matching zone layers, right? So to actually fill a zone, you need to have a you know two things with that same net name in there, also it won't fill in. So you're not going to see the fill in here, but we're going to actually use this thing anyways, right? So this is now a dummy zone with the net name RX0. Now if we go and drop something in there that has an RX0 name, then it will actually fill. Uh, but let's first take a look at some of the files here, right? So what, what I'm going to do is open up the the name, or the, sorry, the footprint file that I created. And like I said, I created that with a with the bitmap to, uh, to footprint process. Uh, so let's go and open that up here. Uh, so this is actually what it looks like. This is the copper layer. And this is what a footprint file looks like. And it's, you know, it's relatively human readable, right? I had actually modified this. So most footprint file, sorry, most uh, bitmap imports actually default to the silk screen layer. I went through and I changed all of them to the copper layer. Like I said, I, I have other videos about that, so you can go and, and watch that as well. But you see here that basically what it is is basically you know listing what layer it's on. It's giving some reference names, stuff like that, and then it's basically just giving coordinates. Now this is actually a very complex shape because I created this in a in another program. There's there's complex curves in here, uh, and so it went and figured all that stuff out. Now you see there's also multiple shapes in here. Uh, you see this line break, this is actually each pad is a different FP poly, right? And so, uh, and so that's <laughs> what was created from, from that import process. Now what I want to do is I want to go and copy one of these, these footprints uh, and put it into the, uh, the fill zone that I just created. So what I'm going to do is actually save the one I just created because now it has that, that uh, footprint in there. I'm going to close this. 
And then we're gonna open up, so let's look at the hardware file here. So now this is my directory with all of the with all of the, the footprints and stuff. And I'm actually gonna drop the .kicad PCB into here, right? So now it opens up as a new file. Now what I'm gonna, so now you can see all the stuff that's in here, right? It has all the layers, it has the clearances, yada, 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 yada. What we're really looking for though is a zone. So I'm gonna go and search in here, search in here for zone, right? You see I've already searched for it. There's only one zone in this entire thing. This will get much messier later, but you see that this is the zone that I created, right? So it's a zone type, Rx layer, Rx zero layer, and you could go and change all this stuff, but this is the main thing here, right? I wanna go and I wanna replace the XY of that, that dummy zone that I added with the zone uh, in here. I'm gonna try and guess which one it is. Um, I'm gonna guess it's actually you know this one. I, I don't actually know which one it is. I'm gonna create one of these for all of them. But what I'm gonna do is copy all of, the, all of the points here for this polygon and only get the polygon. So it's before the, you see the closing brackets here. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna copy it into here. Okay, I'm gonna save this guy, close it, and then I'm gonna open it back up in KiCad and see what happened. All right, so now we see that I actually did copy this top one here, but now this is a zone. You can see there's tons and tons of points here, but it basically replaced all of the, the points that I would have gone and had to copy myself. What I can do now is go and drop this right on top And now basically, instead of having a copper zone, so what I'll do is I'll delete, oops, uh, how do I do this? I want to uh, delete the copper zone, right? I was just selecting that one zone there. Uh, remove, here we go. Okay, so now I, did I get rid of the zone too? Oh, I did get rid of the zone too. There we go. Okay, so now the zone is still up here, right? So you see if I hit B, if I, well, you don't see it, but usually when I right click, I can uh, so right click on the zone outline, then I should be able to fill, fill the zone, right? So if I hit zones, fill, it should fill, right? In this case though, it actually is not filling because like I said, there's nothing in there. So let me change the, uh, let me change the footprint to ground let me change, sorry, the zone, um, the zone net name, mouse over, hit E, zone outline, and now I can change the net name to something like ground. Okay, I'm gonna move this, this uh, resistor to the top side. You see now there's a ground pad in there. If I hit B now, it should fill in. You see now it does fill in, and this is the behavior that I wanna have. I wanna have cutouts around uh, the existing footprints that do or don't fill in there. Now you see that there's actually uh, a pink layer here that's actually because of the, the solder mask layer. You see there actually is a cutout around that pad one. And that's ultimately what I'm looking for. So when I go and fill in all these zones now, I only have the fill, uh, I, I actually do have cutouts around the existing thing. I don't have any DRC errors in that case. So you can see that this is, uh, you know, this is kind of a hassle, but what you did see as well is all of those points uh, you know, KiCad is actually not doing complex curves. This is unfortunately a limitation of version four. There's not uh, curved sections. It's basically approximating, you know, small dots to get more complex curves in there. What we're doing is we're taking a, the process going from uh, PNG in, in this case, you could also do DXF import, right? I'm, ex I'm pulling in all those points, or sorry, I'm importing a, a PNG it's creating all these complex points using the, the bitmap importer. I'm then going and grabbing all those points out of the footprint file, and then I'm going and inserting them into the zone file. Now I realize that this is not a super awesome process, but it is possible. And that's really what the, the, the thing I wanted to point out is that I'm not going in and clicking all the dots, right? I could go and trace around all these things, but I don't wanna do that, right? In this case, I just go and copy paste all these things into these different zones. And now I've, uh, I've rectified the situation of needing to uh, have a, uh, you know, a completely custom thing here. Basically, I'm going from this huge SVV, SVG file that I had and going through the different flows to create a art piece. Uh, so 
Uh, if you have any questions about this, you can go and ask down below. Uh, like I said, I found answers on the KiCad forum, which is always a pleasant surprise, and I think you will as well. Uh, if you have any questions about building boards for, you know, building your next board, uh, this is something that we do in contextual electronics, not as much on the art side, but definitely on the practical, choosing parts, getting the layout done, uh, even inserting, you know, silk screens, but not necessarily artistic ones. If you have any questions you can ask over there, you can always ask, sign up for the mailing list as well if you're not quite ready to sign up for the course. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.